Let's take a look now and see what an assembly drawing looks like. We've made all the parts, and you'll be making a few more. This one's not all the way complete. You have a few more parts to make, but I pulled in the ones that I'm giving you. There are additional parts. There's a roller and a cam bar, and um, there's the seat ring and the O-ring and the clapper. We've all seen before. And this is what a typical assembly drawing might look like. First of all, I've got a suppressed view up here that I I really just used it to make my um, my section view because in this case it's going to be easier to see the parts in a section and then since there are some typical names to these parts um, I've identified them this thing's the clapper the o-ring the seat ring the roller the cam bar those are typical names regardless of what size or material they've been used. That's just to make this kind of a check assembly, that's what they're called. And I've also identified the flow direction just because I needed to. And then I noted that the clapper material and the O-ring material are tabulated. So what does that mean? That means I could have lots of different materials, but it's always going to look like this. And they'll always go together this way. Okay. And so now over here, I've given them item numbers. Because most bills of materials work off of item numbers. Okay, so, and I think it's easier to see it in the isometric view than it is to see it in the uh, orthographic view. Okay, so I've done, I've done my work here, and we'll do that all in lab. But now I've got two views that really tell everything. And notice that there, there are no dimensions on here. You're just going to put the parts together. If it were, like, important to have the dimensions, uh, it, could, it could be useful to put one dimension in here. Something like that. So that somebody could see what diameter this was. Let's see if I can um, get that with a. Not going to look very good there. Okay, so I might I might just have something up here where I take a dimension and put it on. Maybe one from here to here. That would be an easy dimension to check, and it would give somebody the idea of what size it is. And since we're not machining it, that's a reference dimension. So it goes in parentheses. So th th those are the two views. Now, just like all drawings, there would be some notes down here that will be about the, um, about the assembly and the inspection. There's a revision block. There's a title block. There is no standard tolerance block. You don't need one. But we do need each of those items to be told how many we're using, what it's called, and what its part number is. Now, I could make a separate one of these on a drawing for every single combination of my materials. EPDM, nitrile, viton, silicone. I might even have some different uh, materials for the cam bar and the roller and the pins that are all going to go on here. And by the way, these are only part of the num part of the um, items. You're going to have to going to have to model a few more. But each of these is going to have an assembly part number. So it's going to look like this, but there will be an assembly part number for the EPDM one. And that will have the clapper and the O-ring made out of EPDM. And there will be a separate one for nitrile. And the clapper and the O-ring on it will have their own part number. Because they are different parts. They're different materials. They're shaped the same and machined the same. And used. Used the same. 
um, but they have a different part number because their materials are different. So that's called a tabulated part number, and there will be one, two, three, four separate top-end bill of materials for this. And then, of course, you'll fill your check assembly out as it is. So that's that's what we're going to do this time. Now, there's a lot of bill of materials work because you need, now you know that there's going to be four different clappers, one, two, three, four. So you're going to have to have four separate bills of materials for the clappers, four different O-rings, and four bills of materials for this full total part. And you're going to need to add some more things. There's a pin that goes through here, a pin that goes through here, a pin and some bushings and some spacers that go over here, a spring not shown for clarity. So there will be some parts that you're not going to see on here, but you're actually you will see a lot of those once you model them. Okay, so there we go. That's what that's what we're gonna do. That's assemblies, tabulated assemblies, and your production control. Now the good thing is your work order is gonna be the same work order every single time. These are put together exactly the same no matter what they're made out of. Okay, your purchase order will be a little bit expanded. And you'll have a bunch of different bills of materials. So that's the essence of what we're doing this week. We just have one week to do it to kind of finish this up. And then uh, at the end, we're going to pull all of these things together, make PDFs, and make a product book out of it. Okay, so so a product book is just a general reference. Um, it can be printed, it can be digital, whatever, that contains all of the material. So it would even include um, specification drawings and approvals and, um, you know, your vendor certifications and all that kind of stuff. We're not going to put all that in but we're going to put in the parts that we do have and list sections for those other parts that you could know to fill in later. All right, there we go. That is assembly, tabulated assemblies, production control, and product books for our check assembly design.